Coach, it's the good with the bad. You're happy for all the guys that get drafted, but guys like Jensen, Carter Bins, JT Arruda, who could have come back next season, are now gone. So now you have to dig back into your archives and find new guys to fill those roles. What do you expect the 2020 Fresno State team to look like? <laughs> Welcome to my world. Uh, yeah, no, that's what it is. Uh, it, it's uh, basically half your team is gone every year because your seniors are gone, obviously, and your best juniors are going to sign. Next year, we have two seniors on the roster because of all these juniors that signed. So uh, we'll be back to being young, but uh, on the mound, it's got a chance to be really, really special. You can move Jaime into a starting spot. Now, there's, who's got an All-American returning uh, and left-handed? And, and Nico's going to be much better. Uh, Carvajal might end up being the Friday night guy. Uh, he's, he was super special down the stretch, and uh, Larson's going to be in the mix of it. You can go right down the list of you know, who's got six or seven really reliable pitchers that you can trust returning. So uh, on the mound, I think we're going to be really good. Uh, I don't know how we're going to score any runs at this point because <laughs> everybody's gone. Uh, so that's going to be interesting how we piece that together. And we've got an incredible schedule. With uh, We kick it off with Irvine here and Washington here. Uh, we go off to Arizona State and off to Oklahoma State. So the schedule's going to be super, super good like it was this year. And uh, like I said, I think we'll pitch well enough to handle it. Just going to depend on if we can score enough runs. Well, the guys coming back now have NCAA tournament experience, which you hadn't had since 2012. I want to ask you about a couple of guys who are either in the bigs or kind of making their way to the bigs right now. Between Aaron Judge, Jordan Luplo, and Taylor Ward, two guys who were first-round draft picks, one guy who was a third-round draft pick, and Luplo has found a niche for himself finally. You joked a couple of weeks ago, both he and Judge know that Luplo's got more home runs than Judge right now. Judge definitely is aware of that. Might catch him pretty quick, but for now, uh, Luplo's got the upper hand, and we've made sure that Judge knows that. So why did the Cleveland Indians use Jordan Luplo in the cleanup spot one day and then he's on the bench the next day? Can you explain that to our viewers out there? <laughs> you know, they, they play so much with these uh, metrics now and the matchups. Uh, I'm sure it has something to do with that. Um, but you watch, Luplo gets a, a year, year and a half underneath his belt. Uh, he won't be coming out for anybody a year and a half from now. And what's the plan for Taylor Ward? Obviously, when he was at Fresno State, he was a catcher, gets drafted as a catcher. They move him to third base. What's his projection long term? What do you think? Yeah, I think what they're trying to do is find a position that he can win you games at. Uh, catching, he has phenomenal off the chart tools. Obviously, he's a first round draft pick as a catcher. Where he fits into their organization and their philosophy behind the plate uh, may differ than what we did. Uh, they've tried him at third, they've tried him in the outfield. Uh, but bottom line, his bat's going to get him to the big leagues to stick. And my gut feeling is that might be in left field the way I see how they're using him now. And that's not how I do it. I put him down the plate and let him go. Uh, but he's going to hit his way to staying in the lineup, and he's putting up excellent numbers in AAA right now, and I think you'll see him bounce back and forth several times this year until he sticks. All right. He's head coach Mike Batesel, Mountain West Coach of the Year.